Hey, is Yara Fon, uh, co-founder of Pixie Set. Um, thank you for having me here. Uh, it is, as I mentioned the first time, we're showing this product. Um, I'd like to tell you about the vision for Pixie. Um, the Pixie briefs are disposable incontinence product, and um, the uh, future features that we have planned for this, which are very exciting. So, um, many of you have uh, been thinking about this shortly, that the future of healthcare is in early detection, and our mission is to uh, bring this forward with products that are ultra low cost, extremely simple, extremely unobtrusive in people's daily lives, in the lives of people who need them, and in the lives of people that take care of them. So, um, now, we have that. Yeah, so we'd like to um, show you a short video about how this product came about because we did not start with a product for the aging adults. We actually started at the other extreme. Uh, it was a product, and it still is a product, for children who were just born. This is Pixie Scientific, the team that brought you smart right. diapers. Where's the microphone? Where's the microphone? Yeah. We are the co-founders of Pixie Scientific, the team that brought you smart diapers. Smart diapers are a revolutionary new way to monitor your baby's health. Since we launched smart diapers, we received many messages urging us to make this technology available for adults. We couldn't wait to help. And today, we are glad to announce that yes, we can. Today, we are bringing you our latest product, Pixie Briefs. Pixie Briefs work the same way as smart diapers. Simply scan the indicator panel on the front to check for a urinary tract infection and hydration status. And boom! Our application will show you the day-by-day -day trends in your loved one's health. By screening before problems develop, your loved ones can avoid UTI-related hospitalization, dizziness, falls, and aggravated pain. And you can spend more time with them. Family, nurses, caregivers, you've written and we've listened. You will love this. Simple, quick, clean. Pixie Briefs. Pre-order today at pixiescientific.com. Um, a little bit more about the product. Um, microphone. So again, this is the first incontinence product that's capable of screening for urinary tract infections and monitor hydration status. Um, I'll talk about other features uh, in just a little bit. Um, there is a uh, dry chemical reagent panel that's built into the product. And as you saw in the demo, um, a caregiver or a nurse in a uh, long-term care facility can we scan the front once the diaper is wet. Um, they can do that while the diaper is, while the brief is still on the patient, on the resident, uh, or they can do that following the change. So it was designed to be extremely ergonomic. There's nothing to unfold. It scans from the front. Um, the uh, obvious markets that we're targeting are aging adults that are at elevated risk of urine tract infections. The incidence rate is quite high. Um, it's multiple days per thousand year, a uh, thousand days in a long-term care facility. Um, it leads to um, multiple comorbidities, um, which sure many of you are aware of if you have aging parents or grandparents. Now, um, the problems that are experienced in screening for urinary tract infections are multiple. Um, the adult, in most cases, cannot tell you. They 
are not experiencing the same symptoms as they had been experiencing 20 or 30 years before. And in, mo in many cases, it, the symptoms are also not easily observed. Um, in many cases, there is no fever. The immune system has become too weak to mount a significant response to the gram-negative bacteria that causes it. So, uh, as a result, the uh, screening criteria in long-term care facilities are typically change in behavior. And change in behavior is not just sudden. A um, nurse needs a few days to understand that it's happening. As a result, that leads to either under-treatment or over-treatment. Um, in many places, what we hear about and what is actually in the published literature is that antibiotics are prescribed on second or third day of change in behavior regardless of sort of any logs or um, any supporting documentation. So, um, in addition, there are other uh, populations that um, we'd like to target this product for. There are adults that are recovering after surgery, after prostate cancer. There are type 1 diabetics that um, go into diabetic ketoacidosis on occasion. Um, and in the aging population, there is a very high frequency of chronic kidney disease. We uh, will talk about the features for, for CKD patients. Um, so here's our uh, solution. And, it is, and as you saw in the demo, it's composed of um, multiple parts. There is the disposable diaper. There is the application on the phone. It runs on the tablet as well. And the third piece is actually a cloud service. And the cloud service is what tracks the data over time and makes the recommendations. Uh, the recommendations are never done on a single data point. We are, um, are using a stream of data, and that's why uh, the very first part of the vision that I mentioned was ultra low cost. We want to make sure that every single data point we acquire is as cheap as possible. So simple, unobtrusive, low cost, and safe. Um, the reagents never touch the uh, patient's skin. Um, the cost we're targeting is a small premium on regular incontinence products, and this will take less than 10 seconds for a nurse to use. Moreover, you need to, um, we're, our recommendation is to use this once per day. So it's about 10 seconds per day per patient. Um, this is uh, a bit more, um, just sort of larger screenshots for, um, for you to see. Um, so a bit more on how we've made this so low cost. And the answer is more software, you know, which we can uh, discuss during breakout. Um, safety, uh, obviously no chemical reagents ever touch the patient's skin. There are no, act no active electronics in the product. Um, so um, the additional features that we're targeting um, are um, greater accuracy as we use more, as we accumulate data over time, as we learn from the database. We uh, will allow the caregivers and the staff to enter the patient's history, and we'll be able to use this additional medical history in order to make the recommendations. Um, and the data can be shared with clinicians, so nurses will be able to get feedback from a remote physician, which is functionality that's actually already there. Um, so uh, the future features are screening for diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, electrolytes, which uh, will actually help us understand um, not just hydration, which is the obvious uh, thing that you probably are thinking about, but also uh, potential, um, potential development of arrhythmias and tachycardias. Um, we would like to be able to monitor whole communities at once and um, 
we will be able to spot problems with a whole community rather than with just one patient at a time. Um, we are working with the academic community and we'll make an API available to them to examine our data. Um, and uh, a very exciting feature uh, for monitoring patients with chronic kidney disease and patients that are recovering from surgery who are at elevated risk of acute kidney failure is characterization of specific proteins that are markers of extreme autoimmune activity. So, on that, um, we have a few slides about development and progress, which we will discuss. So, probably where we are. Um, the reason we're here is we would uh, we are now at the stage where we, we're speaking with long-term care facilities to launch a pilot study. Do you have an idea sort of when and where people could buy these, or is it still too early before they're on the shelves? So we are targeting a for, uh, clearance by the FDA mm -hmm. by the second half of next year. Okay. And so if, uh, the faster we can get the study going, that's really good. So this is an FDA clearance Correct. required product? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other companies like this doing this? Uh, none that we're aware of. Yeah. Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, I understand correctly. There's no electronics, no IP. Yeah, no. Okay. Can we take a question in the back first, and then? Yeah, yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same question. How do you get the information from the cloud with no radio? Oh, uh, it's from here. Can you just repeat the question? So the question is, how do we get the information to the cloud with no radio? Uh, you scan. But how do you get it from the diaper to the end? Uh, it's the, uh, by taking the photo. By taking the photo. Well, so you have to go to the patient. You have to go to the patient, yes. But the patient is being changed either by the family or if they're in a facility by the staff. Is that like a QR code? So the, the QR code embeds some, uh, some product information, but it also allows us to perform a scan without actually, without the uh, caregiver having to press any buttons. So, so it recognizes the colors. It recognizes the colors, and that's it. All right. So it's a pretty cool science. So it, it, it understands when the, the uh, when the picture is in focus, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we were gonna. I will take you first because you have to Oh, just uh, you. You said you already have a product for children. We are we are in parallel developing the product. But that also requires FDA approval. Correct. And so it's not a, in the market yet. So we are starting a pilot study at UCSF Children's Hospital. Right, yeah. yeah. So the reagent's not proprietary. The only Correct. thing I saw about proprietary, if there's the software, Correct. optical recognition of a color change doesn't seem that defensible. What is special about the software? So the whole system put together is proprietary. So you mean patented? Uh, we have a we have a file for patent. Uh, the whole system is proprietary because, first of all, um, correcting for different lighting conditions is not so straightforward. Uh, the reagents are off the shelf, but they work in a different environment with the presence of oxygen. Um, they're, they give a reading for two minutes, and if, you have, if you've ever used the urinalysis strip, the colors degrade after a couple minutes, after two to five minutes, depending on the reagent. So with this, uh, the staff can change a patient up to two hours later. Um, so um, the software, however, is the biggest, sort of most defensible part, if that's what you're digging for. And what is specific, uh, what is most proprietary about it is that we track data over time. And we, we look at various parameters that only make sense to look at over time, such as creatinine, ketones, where um, when, when you see the reading on a um, on the urinalysis strip one time, it's not the most meaningful information. So we can talk offline about what we do with the information over time. Excellent. Uh, we had uh, Richard. Actually, what, can we, when we have a question, just introduce yourself at the same time? Sure. Richard Mix from Agent. Um, uh, just a quick question. 
any idea of the price point as far as how much more than product? So we we have surveyed a number of facilities and we have a number uh, that's per diaper. Uh, the price per box, the price per unit, because there will be a number of these smart fixie briefs and a number of regular ones they use during the rest of the day, will be about 30% 30, 30 higher. So, so right. the, price, the price per is a dollar is fifty. The price on the shelf is like 80 cents to a dollar. Sometimes it's 50 cents if you're buying millions. <laughs> All right, any other final thoughts? Otherwise, that's it for Scientific. Thanks very much.